folks. Uh, Chaos Prime, you came into my uh, Twitch channel uh, about, a, about a week ago, was it? About a week, a week and a half ago? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, yeah. You were, you were super, super nice, came in, uh, super interested in Anthem. You actually dropped your Twitch Prime, which I, I super, super appreciate. It's very, 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 very nice of you. Um, so tell me what your uh, interest and involvement in Anthem has been so people can kind of get caught up on who you are. So I've been following Anthem for quite some time. I was starting out on YouTube relatively following Destiny, but then Anthem caught my eye. And then as I was following it more and more, I became more interested. And well, the rest is pretty much as it is. I really do enjoy Anthem. I look at things generally quite objectively and see it for what it is and take it from there. Yeah, which is which is something that uh, I, I think a lot of people, if you look at the uh, the Anthem Reddit nowadays, um, is is not something that uh, people are really really doing right now. I mean, you take a look at the uh, the Anthem Reddit right now, and it is just a, I mean, it, it's it's a disaster right now. Like, what, so being somebody that's objective, what is your take, kind of overall on the state of the game currently and what the the feedback of the game has been so far? But pre-Cataclysm, the game needed a lot of work. The Cataclysm that's here um, will actually fix a lot of problems. I've been playing the PTS quite a bit recently, and honestly, it's really good content. The Cataclysm itself is great. The Cataclysm free play is a lot of fun and has a lot of things changed up. But in terms of the state, as of right now, this second, it's borderline average it just needs more content and the cataclysm can't come soon enough yeah yeah that's what i kind of agree I, I agree with you on that right now and we're, we're going to get into this a little bit more as we go along but um for, for me the cataclysm overall and just kind of discuss like what we played so far it like it, it's it's good it's okay uh but i'm not exactly sure if this is the type of content or if this content is what is going to bring a people back to the game and then B keep those that have been playing the game for the last three or four months still still playing it um but we we, we can discuss that a little bit more when we go into some of the stuff that I have I have on uh on screen here uh some articles and whatnot that uh that are getting some feedback and, and thoughts from other people so let's just start uh off here for people that don't know what the cataclysm the cataclysm is uh, it's a season-long event with new enemies to fight, mysteries to uncover, and powers to be gained. Uh, and there is a public test server aspect to it. So the first two weeks, the first two weeks is going to be what they're calling the uh, the pre-event. Uh, and then the last six weeks is going to be the actual Cataclysm event itself. So uh, testing on the PTS has begun. And you can actually send in bug reports, which I will show here on these boards. These boards here at uh, answers.ea.com. There's a bunch of different uh, topics already open here. I'll just kind of hit back here. So it's general discussion, feedback, and bug reports. Lots and lots of topics started here, 101 in the, in, in the general. And then this is where you put your bug reports here. So if you are playing on the PTS, this is super, super important uh, to do, I would say at this point, is to give them feedback, let them know how things are going um and again lots and lots of different bugs some stuff for me that i've encountered um there is there's a lot of crashes in the pts uh especially going between uh loading screens uh the launch bay has a lot of crashes um there's been a mouse cursor uh disappearing issue too and a lot of the, the same things here uh that people are saying you know game crashes on startup so there is a lot of work still to be done here so if you are playing on the pts it is super super important that you guys send this feedback in. Um, have you been playing Cataclysm and all their chaos and then sending in any sort of feedback or what's, uh, are you mainly just doing it through uh, your, your YouTube? I've been playing the Cataclysm a lot today, actually. Um, it was pretty cool because I was playing with a bunch of EA Play attendees. Every time I joined the Cataclysm, it was like EA Play 22, 23, 24. Yes. And Honestly, with me, I've not experienced a single crash at all when it comes to 
really? like cataclysm events. Yeah, I've not experienced one. I've spent about, give or take about four or five hours in there today. Not a single crash. Um, I did spawn a couple of times underneath the world, and then it just reloaded me back into it. Yes, yeah, that's that, that. Yeah, that's one. That's one I've encountered as well too. That you you kind of spawn underwater. Just interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's basically done because uh, you're loading before the level loads. Yeah, uh, they were actually talking about this exact bug on uh, State of the Game for the Division where they had a similar issue and it's essentially the same bug where your character is loading before the map loads so it places you underneath because you start sinking yeah yeah well yeah it's, it's definitely a weird one um so yeah so this is guys this is where here you can you can send your feedback for particular bugs um so really i mean that's that's what the public test server server is uh it, it is a complete re-download of the game so you are looking at some extra uh, SSD space, which uh, is hopefully going to get better. They said with smaller updates. Uh, the, la the last update you had to to reload the entire thing, which I know again was a little bit of a problem for some other people. And some of the, some people that I've talked to are are not impressed that it is a completely separate uh, install from the regular game, which I can understand. Uh, but if if you are willing to get in here and uh test the game i think it'll really really help them out before this thing launches i mean basically uh from what they're saying uh it, sh it should launch in in, in a week right because it it's two weeks uh pre-event to try and get some of the, the bugs out and get the feedback and then it goes live for six weeks um and that's another question too that i think needs to be kind of answered as we move into getting some some thoughts here overall is do you do you think that this will be eight weeks and then it goes away, Chaos? Yes. Yeah? Okay. That was always the intention for this content. It's always designed uh, to... Because basically, as the story flows, you get the Cataclysm, and then you subdue the Cataclysm, the Cataclysm dies down, and you get access to a new area. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And do you, do you think that, that removal of content is, is good? for the game or if if they have something lined up that is going to take it over do you think that that transition will be seamless hopefully so as it is right now in the current state i think the removal of any content is bad yeah. simply because we're starved of content however within the six weeks if they can replace it with something meaningful that we can go that has plenty of replayability I think that will be okay, but it just depends on whether or not they can actually get that content there in time for it. And, and I'm it, not sure they're going to have that time. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's always been the question with development of this game is are, are they going to have things done in time and ready to go in eight weeks to replace the Cataclysm content? Um, I was not a fan of the removal of the Elysian Chests because I think that left a big, big void in terms of the grind, and it took away something for people to uh, achieve. I, 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 for one, could not understand why they took away the Elysian Chest, why they removed them, and if they don't have any sort of content that is ready after this apparent eight-week Cataclysm event, to take that away and then leave kind of the base game, I don't think it's going to be a great... Uh, a great situation either I mean they really need to have something ready after the cataclysm because if they don't and they remove the cataclysm and leave nothing there not even access to the new area there's going to be a lot of bad press for this yeah 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 and and some of the press here uh for the cataclysm public event and I have it up on my screen here now this is this is games radar so take this high as you will but it was very, very difficult for me to find any article, any article from any news publication that had any sort of uh, positive, positive outlook on the Cataclysm public event. Um, is is this is this chaos kind of a situation for you that no matter what this game does or what this game releases, that it's always going to get a not great reaction? Or can can they release content 
and release this cataclysm in say let's say another week or week and a half how, however long it is and put it on live and have good reaction to it through the pts uh server feedback and getting it to a point where it comes out in another week or so and people are impressed by it in general i think the ultimate people that are going to decide this is the playing base the players themselves will make the decision at the moment the press is loading up everything and anything they can when it comes to anthem because it's clickbait central right at, the, yeah. at this point no matter what they do even if they put a gold miner it will get literally trashed to hell because it's just the way it is when it comes to anthem it has become one of the greatest memes ever literally and no matter what good they do it's just gonna be pretty much trashed on the yeah. removal of the Elysian chest was a bad move, in my opinion. I totally agree with you. I know they set it up with a 40-day timer, but considering they had nothing to replace it with, they should have left it there and kept it going. But in my experience with the Cataclysm, I had about four rounds today, and each one I enjoyed thoroughly. The encounters were pretty well done. I was playing on GM1, so it was a lot easier than it would be if I was playing on GM2 or 3. And honestly, I had a lot of fun playing it. And I'm pretty sure once the player base actually gets in there and starts working on it, because the puzzles aren't overly complicated from the three or four encounters that I did. Yeah. So once the players actually get their hands on and start playing it for themselves, I think they're going to thoroughly enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. What One thing that I, I had heard from somebody, uh, actually Mr. Scotty Mack, was that... Uh, the cataclysm the timed event feels like at this point uh the sunken cell sunken cell plus is what he called it sunken cell plus right it's it's an area that has a lot of puzzles and that kind of thing that you know it, it could use a little bit more work uh in terms of the puzzles and, and kind of what you're doing within it um but again i i i think it's i think it's a great first step and you're right i mean everything that comes after this game is just going to get memed it's going to get trashed um which which is unfortunate so i think doing this whole transition from the pts to cataclysm and then possibly in at the end of the eight weeks the, this transition over the next you know two three months for the game is going to be very very important uh grabbing some stuff from the chat here uh chira where do you get the comes out in a couple weeks stuff where has that timeline been confirmed so they they said uh it's it's an eight week event with two two weeks on the pts server and then they re release it on the live servers. So that that's always been the, the timeline for the Cataclysm event. Um, so here, I think the negative press on the Cata is due to the fact that it was supposed to be a Cataclysm, and instead they turn it into Time Gates mini quests. Yeah, yeah, you know, but I, th I think we need to take small steps here, Josh, um, and and understand that. I mean, they're they're still they're still under the gun with a lot of this stuff. Like you can too, and I don't have, quite have any ideas, but I always thought it would be a little bit weird that many leader shooters do puzzles for certain mechanics. Hard to explain, just feels weird for high octane movement to puzzle. What are, what are your thoughts on that that chaos? Mikey can't tune's uh, uh, statement there that, that it's in, odd for leader shooter of... puzzles. Looter shooters in general, you just want to loot and shoot, right? right. That's uh, the general philosophy. Yeah, but I've come from destiny and a lot of the raids there aren't just loot and shoot yeah the main focus of almost every raid there is working out the mechanic that's there that will enable you to do the said content yeah and anthem is no different yeah you do the mechanic and you get a short window to do your burst damage and then you repeat the mechanic this is pretty much standard raid type features that you would expect in any other looter shooter that yeah. is a raid yeah. even if you go and play the division with the raid over there you have certain windows where you can do damage to the boss and then other then after you've gone through that window you've pretty much got to do the mechanic deal with what's going on and wait for your next opportunity yeah. and so far the first encounter that you go into in the cataclysm you have to get all pistons down i think there's about 14 of them within a set period and you get like a 10 15 second window to destroy the first crystal and that is just the beginning mechanic you've got other encounters that provide you with other different mechanics but essentially 
it's always going to be this way. And I think the final boss is pretty much the only one that deviates from this that allows you to full time shoot. And because of that, the final boss is a little bit easier than it should be. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, pulling some more stuff out of the chat here, Franchi. Uh, Anthem's not a leader shooter yet, though. I agree. Uh, Anthem, in its current state, in my opinion, is an action is an action RPG game. Right. Uh, uh, until we get more actual loot within the game, in my opinion, Anthem it right now in its current state is an action RPG game. Uh, TJ Tart, TJ Titan, it adds another vertical depth to its content. Anthem is and always will be a game that feels way more. When you are just leaping and speeding through whatever uh, stage of content, uh, it's a cure, But those are boss mechanics; they aren't puzzles. Okay, no, hey, all all fantastic thoughts here, guys. Um, you know, we'll uh, we'll pull out questions and thoughts here as we go along in in the chat. But yeah, right right now, for me at least, and I don't know if uh, chaos if you agree with this, but Anthem is definitely for me leaning more on the action RPG side than actual looter shooter until they start adding more actual loot to it you know let's let's get the the, the melee slots in let's get the the legendary and the, and the masterwork support stuff in uh what, what are your thoughts on that it may not be an actual looter shooter yet most definitely at present it just doesn't have enough loot to yeah. be a looter shooter yeah yeah it's true. And once you've got there's literally like three auto rifles two uh pistols there's just not enough there for it to be a fully blown looter shooter. And honestly, I think as an action RPG and the way it currently is, it's fine. What it needs to do is fix the progression and actually drop loot that's meaningful. And if they readjust the way the gear score, the ranges work, I think that would help Anthem in, a, in the long run. Yeah. What are your thoughts on um, on um, um, not 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 just the gear score, but also the um, the, uh, the 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 web the weapon damage and and the rolls, right? Like it, for for me, it's not it's not the amount of loot that drops because I think legendary should should be rare, but it, it's the affixes for me that are a real problem, right? Affixes. Even in the PTS version, where we are seeing more drops, a few more drops, more masterworks, and a few and a few more legendary drops, uh, the the affixes for me are still a lot of the problem, right? So you can, you can change, you can change luck, you can change the drops and that kind of stuff, but I mean, if you're getting extra ammo rolls or that kind of stuff, or right, these these crazy different affixes on legendary gear that just make this null and void it entirely that's that's extremely frustrating too is is there is there any point within the pts that you think that jay should maybe tweak affixes i don't think they'll do it in this one but i think in a future pts what they need to do is actually remove about a third of the affixes because honestly they're just a waste of time larger radius and stuff like this they all just need to go. Secondly, what they need to do is apply actual ranges to the affixes themselves. So, for example, if you have weapon damage on an epic, you could have it say from fifty to a hundred, fifty to one hundred and fifty percent, right? Yeah. Then on a masterwork, you could have it a hundred to two hundred, and then on legendary, you could have it one hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty. That way, you know if you get a legendary, the minimum weapon damage or percentage of whatever it is you're going to get will be 150 it's not going to be one percent i mean the fact that you can roll one percent is heartbreaking yeah it's crazy yeah yeah that's what i'm saying like you you roll a legendary with you know three three percent uh weapon damage or three three percent whatever whatever and you're just like oh you're, you're you're just gutted you're just gutted um tiska three of each weapon nine different weapons 27 in total yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just there's just not enough there right now. Uh, Sean is 100% right about affixes. Well, thank you. Glad you agree. Uh, cheer it to me. The loot currently in the game is just the basic stuff. Now we need the, the new fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, when do you when do you think uh, chaos that they are gonna start opening up the store for the new the new items and dropping the, the new items because we're we're able at this point to go through the timed event. And get the war chest currency, 
but we can't actually get the war chests themselves. Uh, do you think that's something that we might see early this week released in a new build? If we're going to get anything with the weapons, I think it will be later this week, not early part of this week, or it may even bleed into next week itself. At present, I think what they're trying to do, from what I'm hearing, is essentially fixing the stuff on the PTS. And the next patch that we get should be a lot smaller, but it should make the build a lot more stable. And the build has stabilized, even though it did require a full download. My PC isn't very good, as you're aware, but this second build that I downloaded is running a hell of a lot smoother than the first one. So in some cases, the re-download was warranted. But in terms of weapons and stuff like that, we might see it by the end of the week, but I think it may push over to the following week. Yeah, yeah, okay, awesome. Uh, Mikey Cantoon, uh, in Rhyme and Reason to Loot, instead of pulling from the entire loot pool for whichever javelin you're playing, uh, there needs to be something to help uh, divide it up. So if you're wanting ability components, farm this enemy or event. If you want weapons, do this and that and components. Yeah. So they so they they kind of did that already, right? With uh, strongholds being where you got your weapons, legendary missions where you got your components. They they've kind of done that already a little bit, but I just don't know if it was implemented well. Uh, many early RPG games did that. You want a certain item or pool of items you farmed mobs or an event yeah well the the, the problem the problem really is that uh legendary missions became kind of irrelevant right they, they became irrelevant because all you're able to get out of a legendary uh mission is masterwork masterworks right so I know, but it's a mixed ratio, pulling from the whole pool. Uh, just showed out the stronghold bosses should hold insanely rare gear that gives you a reason to farm them. I think I think that would be fantastic too, and I think that would be something nice to uh, to test on the PTS as well too. Um, so o overall, um, for the current player base, I think this is good. Overall, the Cataclysm event, I think, is good. Um, what are your thoughts, Chaos, on this content bringing back players? Because that, that, is, that is a big question mark for me, right? Is that we get through the first couple weeks of this testing, they put it on live. The, the timed event requires a group, a full group of four, that knows what they're doing to maximize your score to get the best loot and the best rewards. We, we we know that the interest for the game has dropped. We see the numbers in the Twitch directory that have dropped. Now, I understand that that does not automatically mean success of a game, but I think Twitch viewership, in my opinion, at least shows a, a, a kind of like where interest is. So we're, we're, we're on a downturn with interest right now. Is this going to be enough that when it goes live to bring some people back? The, currently, with the Cataclysm as a Cataclysm event on its own, I don't think it's going to bring back a whole lot of people. However, what they're also bundling with this is a bunch of story quests with actual integral part to the story that continues where the game actually finished off. So anyone that's actually interested in the lore, the story, the characters, and anything like this will at least want to come back and continue that aspect of the story. From what I'm hearing, because I didn't want to dive into it too much myself, the actual yeah. story missions are really, really well done. The cutscenes that are ensuing those story missions are pretty much mind-blowing. Yeah. And I've heard this from multiple people now, that it's going to be great. So if you're interested in the lore and story, I can see a bunch of people coming back. The Cataclysm itself, I don't see it bringing back everyone, but I think it will bring some players back because people will be curious to see what Bioware have done, what their pinnacle content is. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Mr. Scotty, Mr. Scotty Mac, bringing him up again because I know he spent a lot of time and some of his uh, thoughts were that uh, the, tip, the tip of the spear mission, uh, which is the very first mission within the PTS, is very, very well done and the mob density is fantastic as well too the mob density apparently in, in the new missions is very very good 
which I think could be another um, way to address the loot drop situation, right? If you, if you increase mob density and then remove the luck or max the luck out, the more chances you have to actually get drops with more enemies, that should subside some of uh, the, uh, the the loot problems as well too. Holy cow. Uh, chat's Absolutely. Blowing, yeah, chat's blowing up here. Um, Tiska, uh, I would like to know with Cataclysm being an eight-week event, do we only have eight weeks to get the new legendaries that give us five more gear score? Or will we be SOL if you miss anything after the eight weeks? I I am not sure about that. There's not been anything. Have you heard anything about that? Uh, Chaos? So the Cataclysm is eight weeks. Currently, the best way to get them will be through the points that you actually accrue. Because there will be two forms of currency. Uh, small crystals and large crystals. And you can actually specify what type of a weapon you want from the war chest. So if there's, for example, two pistols, two assault rifles, you can pick between a pistol or an assault rifle until you get what you want. Yeah. In terms of the content being available after the event, I know that the area is going to remain, but I'm not 100% sure if the Cataclysm weapons will be available post that, and that leads on to another problem. Because the Cataclysm is leaving, if at any point they increase the gear score, those weapons become redundant. That's true. That's true. Yeah, you're absolutely you're absolutely correct on that. So that's going to be a little bit of a, another little issue too. That we're going to have. Uh, Pyz. Uh, my point of view and only mine. They need to fix a lot of mechanics of the game. How you flow from mission to mission and navigating through all the menus in the forge. Basically, quality of life improvements. They need to focus on that before any new content comes out. Uh, yes and no. Yes and no, because I mean, we, we we can't we can't sit for a huge amount of time and just be doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, right? Quality of life is super super important. I and I agree with you that it is super important. But they've, I mean, they they they've had three they've had three months to figure out quality of life improvements. They've had three months to figure out the crashes and some of them still are happening and i don't understand why i mean we still have people getting pilot data error we still have random crashes i mean it's it's a pts server um and hopefully that you know the feedback that they get is that there are still these types of crashes happening um one of actually one of the one of the surprising things for me and i understand that they are at ea play here let me switch this back out here to the um to the pts boards here is uh, where is here bug bug reports? No, oh, it is. When is it here? Thank you guys for all the uh, all the follows coming in as well too. Really appreciate it. Here it is. General discussion. Uh, PTS known issues. This one here surprises me. So as of the fifth, so this was last Wednesday, and I and I understand that they are at, they are at EA Play. I I get it. They're super busy with at EA Play. The fact that there is one, two, three, four, five, six, there is only seven known issues on this known issues list for me is extremely surprising. I I would have thought that this list would be way longer. Way, way longer. And it's 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 some it's stuff that's not even really all that significant. So do you think this is a case chaos that they just haven't updated this page yet? Or are they not receiving the feedback and updating and communicating well? In regards to the PTS, I think they're looking at the stuff coming in. Because the PTS, don't forget, is an unstable build. It's not fully stable. It's constantly being patched and yeah. tweaked server side. It's not, and this is one of the reasons why it can't come to console. It's a lot more difficult to bring it to console because it needs to go through certification every time and it needs to make sure that the build is stable. The crashes that are happening in the PTS will happen and that's normal because it is an unstable build. In terms of the bugs being so low in terms of known issues, I think this is a case of these are the ones that they're still working on, whereas the ones that aren't listed are ones that they've pretty much already fixed in a later build. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, pulling from the chat here again a little bit. Um, oh, hey, Culver Riot. Uh, yeah, they might just be the reported issues. It's in uh, the PTS. Don't expect so much. They want feedback on gameplay, not every little bug. Okay. That's right. correct. I mean, I mean, that's, that's the name of the PTS. Yeah, that, and that's that's a fair assessment. But the fact for me that we still have pilot data error happening, which has been an issue since the start of the game. Maybe uh, for me, for me, a little bit more focus on the small details might actually help the game. So on that pilot right error stuff, I've been playing primarily on the PS4, as some of you might be aware. So I'm not a PC gamer in terms of Anthem. However, over the past month or so, I've almost not encountered a single crash or a pilot error at all. I know they're happening in the background because I can see my stats going wonky every so often. So I have to switch out my javelin to another one, go to free play, come back and switch back to the one I want to play with to reset that part of data. But in yeah. terms of it actually crashing to the dashboard, I'm not getting this at all anymore. But when I actually started playing on the PC last week, it does seem like it is a PC configuration problem more than anything else. The PC build is literally a lot worse than the console builds because the console builds just don't experience that at all. Yeah. I mean, I see a lot of people complaining there's crashes here, pilot errors here, all these sorts of errors that are basically forcing them to go back to the title screen. And 99.9% .9 of them I'm just not experiencing on the PS4. But when yeah. I started playing on the PC, yeah. I started getting characters in four tasks twisted, heads like being bent over and stuff like that. It's just like, crazy. Like, 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 stuff like, that like, yeah. Like 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 exorcism, like exorcism in yeah. Fort Tarsus. <laughs> and it's like I've never seen this on the PS4 at all, like ever. Like yeah. the first time I loaded in, Prospero looked like something from a thriller movie or something, you know, something from like the thing. Yeah. But I've played for hundreds of hours now on the PS4 and never have I seen anything like that on the PS4. That's... So it does seem to be a PC configuration issue more than anything else. Yeah, yeah, that's and that's interesting. Yeah, because I mean, I'm I'm obviously you know a PC master race. I don't I don't play the game on console. Um, so that's it's, it's an interesting perspective that you have not had that since you started in PC. Um, PYZ, I agree with your points as well, Savage. I think Bioware is just stuck in a difficult position because so many things need to be addressed. Not a problem, PYZ. Um, Mikey can't tune. Yeah, and for console, you're dealing with a set standard of hardware, whereas on PC, you can have a million different hardware configurations. Yes, that's fair. That's absolutely fair. Uh, PC games have so many uh, kinds of hardware to deal with. Frankly, I'm amazed the game runs at all on my rig. Uh, PC Master Race. PS4 Master Race. Look at you, Chaos. <laughs> Let me go back in the chat here and see if we can uh, address some stuff out of here, too. I haven't gotten Pilot that error for over a month. Okay, interesting. I I had it happen once. Last time I was on live, it happened to me. Um, the event will take us to the end of the summer, right? That gives the devs a lot of time. It 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 does, but I think as Chaos and I have said, um, there is a little bit of concern that with the way that the content has been coming out, that it will it be ready? Will it be ready in time? It, it has to be. To make a smooth transition because if you're going to take this content out then there absolutely has to be something to come back in right we can't have we can't have an, an elysian chest situation where you just take it out and there's just nothing uh even apple sticks a certain set of hardware yeah that's true yeah so what what do you what do you think chaos overall? I mean we're we're looking at some of my stream right now, which I I super super appreciate using some of uh, my stream gameplay in your last uh, YouTube video. And if you guys, if you haven't checked out chaos, uh, his his YouTube channel, fantastic, uh, positive, thoughtful, insightful uh, YouTube videos on Anthem. Uh, nothing nothing clickbait about this guy. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to hook up with him on the Tarses. Uh, tavern here today really really super good guy uh tons again of positive and constructive content um for me free play has always been my favorite area of the game and i really really enjoy what they've 
what they've done with the free play uh the free play event and for me removing this would be really a shame because one thing i've always wanted is the free play map to have more to do on it i want it to feel more dangerous right and having this ability to go into a portal where you know we're looking at it right now to have this big bristle back at the end of a three tier chest run i i, I think taking this out is, is, is a real shame personally because i think free play is really where this game shines totally agreed i mean the cataclysm for all intents and purposes will be aimed at a certain market right it will be yeah. aimed at certain people whereas the free play is where it's going to be aimed at for everyone else and the shape of storms that you go into from what i'm hearing that's basically what they are on the roadmap where they said where they actually listed the shape of storms those are essentially what they are that are taking you into these predetermined arenas and removing them will definitely be a big problem but at the same time i can see these coming back in future content i can see these coming back as periodic drops where you have shaper storms littering all over bastion and actually returning the cataclysm will probably return maybe two three times a year but i can see that aspect of the free play returning more often but it would be a real shame because they are actually a lot of fun and it's one of the few things that anthem does really really well yeah 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 and, and tj tj titan uh in the chat here really kind of hits uh, the nail on the head of what i was trying to say was uh the free play map needs to be a constant loop of something to do chaos of content and that's really what i feel uh this these uh, storms have added to free play right is that it gives you it gives you something constantly to do within the free play map because before many of the changes like before the shaper storm and then even before the new the new targeted uh, enemies where they have the targets on the map which i think was another fantastic fantastic addition it, it gives a bit of direction to free play right it, free play is supposed to be this open map of tons of things to do but i actually like that there's been a little bit of direction added to the free play map and i feel that's that's what the shaper storms uh have done on the free play event right so you like if you have one in the top left corner you fast travel to the top left of the corner near where it is. You do all the free play events within that area. You go into the storm, you do the storm, you get your three chests, and then you come out and you can re and then you can reset it. I, I think it gives a great little bit of direction to the free play map. And so you're always, you know, wanting to look for something to do, right? Because if you have if you have between eight to ten minutes, that's more than enough time to fly. You know east or west or somewhere go do something and, and, and then come back right so the free play for me right now feels like a very very busy area of the game and i think it needs to to be busy it needs to stay busy i agree and something that they don't do currently which i do feel like they should do is add roaming Roaming Ursixes and Luminaries and stuff like this exactly. should just be played around the world, not just on the world event side of things. So when you're flying about and you see an Ursix, it might be a lesser Ursix, it might be a legendary Ursix, but you know that when you're flying around, you can encounter these and have a higher chance of loot from these. And these change the dynamic of the game. As well as these, I think they need to add more events in free play the current cataclysm portals that they've got going on right now the shape of storms are fine but it still needs more considering free play is supposed to be their main focus which they have said that the main focus of anthem for replayability is the free play yeah they need to add a hell of a lot more to make the world feel more alive and roaming world bosses are definitely one way to do this because if you're just flying around and you... I mean, you're flying around and see a Titan, you stop what you're doing and you're going to go attack the Titan, right? Because it's standing there and you want to defeat it. Having more of this stuff is always a good thing. 
Yep, I completely agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make, making the free play map feel feel a lot more dangerous. Um, okay, Cherry. Yeah, I, I will take a look at that for sure. I I am almost certain, unless Chaos wants to correct me here, uh, that it was supposed to be an eight week event with two weeks on the PTS and then and then it goes live. Am, am I am I wrong on that, Chaos? The PTS is supposed to last two, three weeks. Um, the Cataclysm itself is an eight-week event. Two weeks is the preliminary content where you have the story missions and the lead-up to the Cataclysm. And the Cataclysm itself is six weeks event. In terms of a release date for the Cataclysm itself, I think we're still maybe about three weeks off that. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah, that, that kind of clears that up a little bit. Uh, Mikey, uh, yeah, and feel it like it matters in a way in free play that helps shape events in the future. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of what I really, really hope that this, this that the PTS and this initial Cataclysm event does, and I, I think Chaos will probably echo my sentiments here, is that this needs to be the first step in making future content for the game, right? Future direction of the game. They need to really take this next eight weeks and see what people like what people don't like right what works what doesn't work and really take it all in and then maybe in 12 weeks time or 15 weeks or 20 weeks time when we see the new content after the cataclysm that it'll be even better than this and then the next content will be even better than this and then even better than that and then that way we can get anthem in a place where it has its big, you know, division comeback. It has its destiny. It has its, you know, uh, Diablo Reaper of Souls is the one that I love to use. It, it has its Reaper of Souls moment. So this is, again, I think the very, very good first step in trying to figure out what works for this game and what the player base of this game uh, really, really is looking for and wants. I mean, let's look at what the Cataclysm does well. Yeah. Right now, it adds a pinnacle event, a raid type event for people to go and challenge themselves. If you just want to play through the story mode on its own in the Cataclysm, you can set it onto the easiest setting. Sure, you're not going to get as much currency, but it's doable by everyone. But for those that want to challenge themselves and go for the highest scores for the leaderboards, you can do that, and it will provide you with a stern challenge to do that. GM3 is going to be rock hard, I can tell you. Um, for those of you that like to play through the story mode, there's story content coming that will develop the story content, so you've got that. For the free play players, you've got a awesome horde mode that you can go into that provides you with ample of loot through the gates. So there's a lot of good things that the Cataclysm update is actually bringing to Anthem. What they need to do from here, as you said rightfully, is build on it and make sure that they push themselves 10% each time. So if this one, if so for example, if this one that we're doing right now is rated as a 20%, the next one needs to be at 30% and then 40%. And each update needs to push it further and further to, until they get to where they need to get to and recapture the player bases. Trust, from what I'm hearing at EA Play at the moment, from a couple of people I know that's actually there. Yeah. The buzz for Anthem is insane. Really? Insane? Yeah, there's a lot of people there that are just crowding around, wanting to get their hands on it, and uh, generally the buzz is quite well. Interesting. News that came out with uh, Ben and Jesse. Mr. Mr. Murdoch, if you're in the chat, Mr. Murdoch has been at EA Play for the last two days, and I have spoken to him... Uh, through Twitter DMs. Uh, Murdoch, if you're able to give your thoughts on that, what what has your been uh, your your kind of insight been on the buzz for Anthem? Because I know uh, Murdoch spoke to Jesse Anderson today. He was not able to say much to him, unfortunately, in terms of specifics. Uh, Mr. Murdoch is another fellow Anthem streamer, really, really great guy. So you guys could all, all go check out his channel. He's been at EA Play for the last two days. Uh, Jesse Anderson would not give him more than uh, we're, we're working on things and there's a lot of great stuff to come. Um, also, Jesse and Ben, unfortunately, and I talked about this today in the Savage Squad Discord, uh, have not been around the show very much because apparently there have been threats 
uh, given towards them, which is super, super unfortunate. And it really, really shows where people are, are at in terms of just ridiculousness, uh, 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 you know, like, like threatening, ga threatening game devs. I mean, like, what are we doing here, folks? Um, so maybe if, if Murdoch is still in the chat, I would love to hear his thoughts on it. Um, and there was a video actually that I wanted to show. It's a two little, two minute little video here from EA play with Ben. It, it's two, it's two minutes, two minutes and five seconds. Let me play this real quick because this is, this is all that we've really seen in terms of Anthem coming out from EA play. Play this real quick. We're going to come to EA Play. We've got a booth out there with lots of fans coming through to play it. But really the big thing for us this year is working with our influencers and game changers. Sure. We have our new update called The Cataclysm on our public test server. Right. And our time here this weekend is really about talking to them, getting feedback, getting yeah. feedback from all our players so we can make that a great up game update. All right, good. You got the marketing okay. spiel out of the way, Ben. <laughs> Talk to me. It's been a interesting four real months talk. for anthem it's been an interesting four <laughs> months what have you guys learned what are you pivoting what's happening yeah look it's, it's been a wild ride you know we, we've learned a lot of lessons over the last four months i think one of the most important ones was just around listening to player feedback better sure. uh and so we we spent some time uh really trying to uh, get this pts game update out uh, making sure instead of us saying to players, hey, this is what we think is really exciting, just give them the game update and say, you come and tell us. What are the things that you right. do it like and the things that you don't like? We're well, really trying to pivot more about. into that that's so that we can about. learn more from what the players want. That's what I found so fascinating when we were talking earlier, right, yeah. is the fact that the public test server is there for people to get in and you guys don't want to be like, telling people what's cool you want to start building this yeah. game with them yeah because you know it doesn't matter what we think it only matters what the players think they're sure. the ones playing the game so if they love it great and if they don't they'll tell us the feedback and we'll do our best to address it so everybody can get into the public test server right now yeah it's available on pc right now if you have access to anthem you can download the game and play it uh, if you happen to be somewhere near the venue feel free to come on in you can play it with us as well uh, and we're just yeah like i said really looking forward to getting all that feedback and trying to make it a really great game update so from there what is the future of anthem and <laughs> is there a future of Anthem? That's a question yes, I see a lot. Yes, a future okay. for Anthem. A very bright future, we, we hope. Look, it, it's kind of the same thing. You know, we've learned a lot this last few months. Um, we really want to make the game better. We believe Anthem can be a really amazing game. We know we have some work to do, and yeah. we just want to work with the community to build it together and make yeah. it the game that everyone wants it to be. All right. Well, thank you, Ben. Thank Get back you. to work. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 a hug oh, for oh, Ben. ben. <laughs> All right, so that is the, uh, the two-minute little interview that they did with Ben Irving from uh, EA Play. And I see Mr. Murdoch has uh, jumped into the chat here. Okay, he says, hi, you can't just go and play PTS. They literally had one computer to play it, and it was outside. Okay, uh, Murdoch, uh, what has the hype been that you've seen for Anthem at EA Play so far? Uh, yeah, I find that I find that helpful too. Uh, Warden, I, I don't like the, the part where he says, you know, we we hope we hope it has a, a bright future. That kind of says to me that maybe like we, we know that they're being watched a little bit, and and what happens with this game is probably you know being being watched very very carefully. Uh, but Murdoch, I would love to know uh, your kind of impressions on what the feedback to Anthem has has been because you're saying. That there's one computer to play it and it was outside. Don't see why they would be pushing PTS play at EA Play. They wanted folks to play the stable stuff. Uh, well, Chaos, you had mentioned that you had saw EA Play names when you were playing on the PTS today or yesterday. Today, yeah. Yeah, today. Um, I counted it in yeah. multiple times. I went into the Cataclysm. Yeah, and if and if you notice too on on the leaderboards, on the leaderboards, well, uh, there's EA Play names. Um, Murdoch. Well, they had PTS comps inside, but it was for content creators. Okay. Warden, uh, for sure. I mean, when you have an hour of sports games in The Sims Four and no anthems in EA's lineup, that was a little bit worrying. Yes. Uh, Bass Rocks. It shouldn't be a case of people telling them what's not great. That is one statement that is really bad in my opinion. They need to release content and let the players decide if it's good or not. 
That's what beta testers and QAs do. This is a AAA title, not an effing beta. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on Master Axis comment there, Cass? In a game like Anthem, I think it's different. It applies to all games as service games in general. They can go in a certain direction to a certain point, but at the end of the day, they will still need guidance at some level from the community. Because if they go head on and head in one direction and it's the complete wrong direction, reversing that is going to be a lot more difficult than going about 30% through and then getting community feedback. And that's essentially what the PTS is for. A lot of other companies do this on a regular basis where they take the content to a certain point and the PTS from what I last remember was only about 50% complete in terms of content. It wasn't fully complete yet. Not everything is accessible in the PTS that's actually going to be available in the final cataclysm. Yeah. But they go a certain point and then they get community feedback on how it's shaping, what's right, what's wrong, and then make those adjustments. The core of the functionality will be there and that's not going to change the core system of the event. But other aspects of it that can be changed will can that the community doesn't like should be changed because at the end of the day like ben said rightfully the game is for us yeah yeah uh murdoch says yeah they had pts comps inside it was for okay i think i read that already content creators uh your anthem and a couple of guys took the top slot today at ea play on leaderboards interesting uh really people were screaming for a pts the pts is for feedback on gameplay not bug testing they have said that repeatedly yes yeah yeah, it, it is mainly for gameplay, though they are taking bug uh, thoughts on thoughts on bugs and, and feedback on bugs. So, all right, fantastic, y'all. Um, unless there is anything else uh, for you, Chaos, that you want to talk about, any other questions from the chat? I know you were able to give me about an hour or so of your time. It is, it is late where you are, and I appreciate you uh, stopping in. I know that we dropped you our YouTube link in the chat here. Uh, is there is there anything else that you kind of wanted to hit on today and your your thoughts on the PTS and the Cataclysm? All I'll say is for people not to write off the Cataclysm based on what they're reading or anything else. If you own the game already, yes. it's a free update. Dive into it. Enjoy it. It's actually good content. The story missions are actually quite fun to play. The progression of the story is interesting and it will leave you wanting more in terms of where they're going with it. And if you can get three other friends to join you in the Cataclysm, great. It is match made. So at the same time, you don't have to have friends to go into this. You can just group up with randoms. The puzzles, in a sense, aren't that difficult. So give it a chance, play it, and judge for yourself. Yeah. Don't yeah. listen to what the surroundings are saying and don't yeah. especially listen to reddit yeah yeah the, the reddit we the reddit we know is a disaster most of the most of the articles coming out are from i mean uh, uh companies that we know are gonna put out you know native content anyways come on in try it out um constantine says with destiny 2 releasing a massive core chunk of the game for free this september why should people stick around for anthem's single event uh because anthem's not destiny I think that's one of the most refreshing things is that Anthem is not Destiny. I mean, it, the the two game the two games are so far apart from each other, in so many different respects. I think that's what will keep people playing Anthem and playing Destiny two uh, separately. Mikey Cantoon says yes. Destiny two made you pay for it piece by piece. If you got the game, want to see what's up with new content drops? That's true. The new Anthem content is free. Sorry, Destiny ahead. thing, it's only year one content that is free. The Forsaken DLC, yes, you get access to the maps, but you got access to no content at all. Yeah. The same for the new Moon DLC, Shadow Keep. You're only getting year one stuff, and there wasn't much there outside of Warmind, so there is that as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. All all Anthem uh, new content is completely free. Yeah, and Chaos Guess is correct. Year one content. Gambit raids strikes. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I mean, it's 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 a different approach, right? It's, it, they're they're two totally different games and two different totally different approaches. And the two expanses, Curse of Rice and War Mine. Yeah, I, I again, I'm I'm gonna really stick stick to my guns here and say that you, we're we're dealing with two different games that are uh, very very different in scope and the way that they're that they are gonna progress. Um, so for me, really, the reason to stick around is to see the progression of the game. And again, hopefully after this cataclysm event drops, we see new stuff coming in, you know, week after week after week after week, right? After three or four weeks, we see the cataclysm done and then we see something new come in. So just the overall evolution of, of what this game can become, because this game has a fantastic skeleton, right? We, the, the people that play this game... The skeleton's there. The combat's there. The visuals are there. Ooh, nice legendary. Um, everything is there for this game to be fantastic. It just needs a little bit of time. So I think if we can get it in a in a in a good place, and all that content is for free, then I think that is a big big incentive for people to stick around and play Anthem. To add one more thing to what you were saying. Absolutely. Are we losing? Uh oh. There we go. Fixed. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. No problem. Um, yeah, to add one more thing to what you're saying Anthem is a completely different game to Destiny, and it will evolve over time. And new content coming along all the time will be a thing. One of the biggest concerns was when the cataclysm goes, what's going to happen to the map area? Why create a whole new map area if you're just going to get rid of it? And we've already had confirmation from Jesse himself that the mm. new playable area for the cataclysm, once the cataclysm disappears, right. will not be going away. Right. Yes, that is actually something we didn't talk about. Yeah, it, it will stay there. It'll still be part of the free play map, and you can uh, and, and you can still do content there. That that's actually a, a, fan, a fantastic point too. So as again, as they open up the map, that again that content stays. That free free play map uh, area stays too. So you know we're not we're not dealing with a, a year one content situation. Then you're paying for everything else. Uh, you know the the, the cake the cake is going to be layered, so to speak, with uh, with this game, and it's definitely one of the reasons to stick around. All right, chill. Uh, I think that might do it, unless we have any other questions. But then, uh, you know, we, we can discuss more when I switch to gameplay again. I want to thank Chaos Prime for coming on the show and, and chatting about Anthem, talking about the Cataclysm, and, and some thoughts on the PTS. If you have not done so yet, please make sure I can get a mod to put his YouTube channel in. Uh, again, fantastic, positive, constructive. Uh, Anthem content, nothing, nothing clickbaity. Great videos, uh, super, super guy. Uh, he is now in the Discord too, so I'm sure we will be hearing from him in the Savage Squad Discord. Um, thank you so, so much, Chaos, for joining us here, and hopefully we can uh, we can do this again when new uh, Anthem content pops up again. Absolutely, man. It's my pleasure. All right. Thanks for having me on board. No problem. There it is, right there. Chaos Prime's YouTube channel. Thank you, Rom. All right, y'all, we are going to end this call here. Chaos, thanks again, my man. And we are going to switch over to some gameplay.